One of my favourite parts about the modern Persona games is sitting in the Velvet Room for three hours to make Persona so disgustingly strong that you can clear any and all challenges with ease. And with enough effort, you can make any Persona you want capable of decimating your foes. However, no matter how much time you spend in there optimising the stats and skill set, some will always just be better than others. That can be due to their weaknesses or exclusive skills that only certain Personas can use. So today, I'm going to tell you what I think are the best Personas from each modern game. This does mean Personas 1 and 2 will be excluded from this video. Also, Persona 3 Reload features DLC Personas locked behind a paywall. As everyone may not have bought this, I will also cover a base game alternative. Lastly, this video will contain minor spoilers for these games. I'm not going to discuss any story whatsoever in the video, but I may end up flashing the odd late game boss fight here and there, so you've been warned. With that done, let's start off with the newest entry in the series, Persona 3 Reload. Without a doubt, the best Persona in Reload is Sondrion, locked behind the Persona 5 Royal DLC set 1. When you first see her in the compendium, you'd be forgiven for thinking that she sucks. She has pretty mediocre affinities, being weak to dark, which a lot of enemies have in this game, and only having a light resistance. Not to mention the fact that she's a level 36 persona with trash stats and seeming like average skills. However, the saving grace that turns this persona from mid to the best by far is her exclusive skill, Slash Driver. This raises the damage of Slash attacks by 75%. If we combine this with Slash Boost, Slash Amp, as well as Multi-Target Boost, then you're getting a 165% increase in your Slash damage. You can throw Crit Rate Boost and Amp on there, as well as at Pupil, let's just say you're going to be landing more critical hits more times than not. Here's me fighting the Reaper on Merciless Difficulty. But wait, there's more. Persona 3 Reload added Theurgy attacks to the mix, one of them being called Scarlet Havoc. Although the skill descriptions for these things say severe damage just like other skills you may have, trust me when I say they are a lot stronger than them. And since the passive skills you have on your currently equipped Persona apply to these things, it's literally just Vorpal Blade on crack. It'll also go through all enemy resistances, so even if an enemy drains or repel slash, it doesn't matter, they're going to die. Now, if you don't believe that Theurgy attacks are stronger than normal ones, here's me fighting the Reaper. That's nearly double the damage of Armageddon. Now, sadly, this persona does have its downsides. Because if you throw out a charge of Orpal Blade and an enemy reflects it, it's more likely than not going to be an instant game over. While Scarlet Havoc will go through that resistance, you can't always use that as the Theurgy takes time to charge up. Now, you could choose to sacrifice Crit Rate Boost for Null Slash to alleviate this issue, but that does mean you're going to be landing less critical hits than you would otherwise. Now, while this build may have a few flaws, I don't even think they even come close to outweighing the absurd amounts of damage this Persona can put out with Scarlet Havoc. It's definitely worth making if you bought this DLC and have yet to put it to good use. An honourable mention for the best DLC Persona goes to Goemon, who is part of the same DLC pack that Sanjuron comes in. You can replicate this build, but with Ice Magic instead. However, it takes a lot more effort. Instead of crit rate boosters, you need Magic Ability and Magic Mastery. Now the only way to get magic mastery is through skill mutation and it cannot be passed down to other personas. Here's me fighting the reaper. For my financially responsible viewers who don't waste their money on broken DLC, the best base game persona is Messiah. He becomes available after maxing out the Judgment Social Link, and he's great. His affinities are far better than Sondrion's, packing resistances for the quad magic elements, as well as repelling light and dark, making him immune to insta-kill cheese. Not only that, but at level 96, he'll learn Null Physical, making him immune to Slash Strike and Pierce. 
and the way to optimally build him to maximize his damage is identical to how we build Sondrion. Just replace Slash Driver with Null Fizz and you're set. This is a brilliant alternative if you don't own the DLC, because while you're not getting that extra 75% damage from Slash Driver, it's still more than enough to clear the game with ease. If you don't believe me, let me show you this clip of me fighting the Reaper with this build. As you can see, the DLC isn't even necessary to break this game. Atlas gave you a way to do that shit for free. That's all I have to say for Persona 3 Reload, but that's not all I have to say for Persona 3. Up next we have... Persona! This one is for all my Nintendo Switch players out there who can't play Reload. The best Persona in Persona 3 Portable is Messiah. Again, you need the Judgment Social Link maxed out to fuse him, but that's literally it. The reason Messiah takes the top spot in Portable is because he is the only Persona to learn the passive skill, Magic Skill Up. As the name implies, you'll become more skilled with magic, specifically by 25%. From here, it's up to you what element you want to run on this guy. You can pick from Fire, Ice, Electric, or Wind. Just make sure he gets the severe attack for whatever element you choose, as well as the respective damage boosting passives. I'll be showing a fire-based build, though each element does the same damage. Now, it's worth noting that Messiah does naturally learn Mega Dolan, and since Magic Skill Up also applies to it, he's technically the best Almighty Persona in the game. So it's worth keeping around on his moveset in case a shadow is immune to your element of choice. Although it can be argued that all of this is pointless since you can just go trade in gems with the Antique Shock Lady and get an infinite supply of Armageddon. Thank you, Atlas. Yoshitsune! I don't think this Persona needs any introduction. Yoshitsune was the poster child of unbalanced Personas in this series. At least until Royal released. Yoshitsune learns the unique physical skill, Hasotobi, which deals 8 hits of weak physical damage to all foes. You stack this with a power charge and buffs, and then just watch the boss's health bars start to melt which is a somewhat rare sight in this game due to it having damage sponges for boss fights. Now, this would be the part where I show footage of me beating the Reaper, but I tried for over an hour to get a crit with Hasutobi and it just wasn't happening. So instead, watch someone else one-shot the Reaper on the PS2 version of Persona 4. He didn't even use the 8th hit of Hasutobi to kill it. Now, unlike Reload Sondrion, you do not have to worry about reflect damage, as Yoshitsune naturally blocks physical, as well as resisting fire and repelling electricity and light. Due to Hasutobi only needing apt pupil to fully optimize the damage output, we have six empty skill slots to work with. You can go ahead and make a completely invincible Yoshitsune, making him either drain or repel everything. The downside is that there really isn't anything he can do to an enemy immune to physical, like, literally nothing. There is no Pierce skill, there is no Theurgy he's got in his back pocket. So make sure you've got a Magic Persona in your deck. This is one of the most solid Personas we've seen in this series, and his legacy lived on in Persona 5. He's still a very good option in that game, but he's a little bit shy from being the best, because that goes to... Izanagi no Okami! By the Myriad Truths! <laughs> If Yoshitsune doesn't need any introduction, then Izanagi no Okami really doesn't need any introduction. This is the most broken Persona, ever. He's not only the best offensive Persona in 5, but he also takes the cake for the best defensive one too, but we'll get into that later. One of Persona 5 Royal's gimmicks is Persona Traits. These are mostly just kind of average, with none of them really breaking the game in any way. But since Izanagi was paid DLC at the time of this game's release, Atlas decided to give him a trait that is objectively better than anything else the game offers, and it's called Country Maker. This increases your offense and defense by the percentage completion of your Persona Compendium. Meaning, if you fill it out completely, you will be dealing double the damage whilst only taking half. That's absurd on its own, but it gets better. His exclusive skill, Mirror Truths, deals almighty damage to all foes three times. That sounds pretty good, but remember it's being doubled by Country Maker, so it's essentially six hits. To be honest, you don't even need to go ham with a build for him in this game. With only a decent percentage of the compendium complete, 
You're already said to take little to no damage from most enemies, as well as kill them in no more than three hits. But of course, the damage output can always go higher, and the damage intake can always go lower. To minimize our damage intake, we give him the skill Firm Stance. This removes your ability to dodge, but halves all damage taken. Combine that with Countrymaker's damage reduction, and you're only taking a quarter of the damage you would have otherwise. That's not even mentioning the fact that Izanagi naturally resists everything apart from Bless and Curse. Meaning, if you're hit with those elements, you get another 50% damage reduction. You will only take one-eighth of the damage. Just so you just how stupid you can be, I want to show you the clip of the game's super boss. Now, if you take too long to beat her in the last phase, she uses a Megadolin that's supposed to wipe your team instantly. Here's how much it's supposed to do to you. And now, here's how much it does to Izanagi. That's ridiculous. But this isn't even why he's the best. The only criteria for making the top spot in this video was maximum damage output. So why don't we start taking a look at that? Now, I already told you how Countrymaker can double his damage, but let's take it further. If we add the passives Almighty Boost, Almighty Amp, and Magic Ability, that totals to a 100% increase in Almighty damage. I'll go ahead and say there is not a single enemy in this game capable of putting up any fight against this. You can very easily do in his solo run of the entire game with this build and face no resistance at all. You concentrate for an extra 2.5 times damage multiplier with some buffs as well, and it's just depressing. Here's me fighting the Holy Grail without even doing the special command. And here's me fighting the Reaper. We didn't even use the third hit. But still, we can go higher. Persona 5 Royal's Merciless difficulty has a weird quirk where weakness, technical, and critical hits deal triple damage. Now, since Myriad Truce is on mighty damage, we can't take advantage of weaknesses or critical hits. But technicals are still on the table. Here's me doing the Challenge Battle DLC against the Persona 3 and 4 protagonists. There's a reason that he didn't make a return in Persona 3 Reload, although Alex managed to fuck up in a different way for that game. Now, this would be the part where I offer a base game alternative, but that isn't necessary. If you're playing on PS5, Xbox, PC, or Switch, then that version comes with all the DLC included. The only version that doesn't is the PS4 version, but Atlas made all of that free, meaning you can just go on the PSN store and get it all right now. Meaning every Persona 5 Royal player has access to this game-breaking Persona. I guess if you really just don't want to use the DLC, then Yoshitsune is still a very good option in this game. And it's possible to make him immune to everything apart from gun attacks. If there's one thing I can conclude from this, it's that Atlas needs to stop adding these day one DLC overpowered personas that just break the game. While Persona 4's Yoshitsune was pretty overpowered, it didn't have the potential to ruin the game, as you still needed to reach level 75 to fuse him, which means playing through a majority of the game without him. The DLC personas can be pulled from the compendium at any point in the game, no matter your player level, and for free. There could have been an issue with a level 9 player pulling him out of the compendium straight away, because his mirror truce costs a decent amount of SP, and at that point in the game, you don't have any SP. But the developers planned around this by giving him Victory Cry, which fully restores your HP and SP after battle, meaning you can just one-shot everything in the game without worrying about running out of SP. I can't wait to see which DLC Persona Atlas makes completely overpowered in Persona 6. Thanks for watching. This is the first essay style video I've ever made for the channel. And I went into it knowing there was a lot of work, but I was still blown away by the sheer amount of time this took to make. If you like what you saw and want to see more of it, then a like and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it would help me immensely. Also, if you just hate waking up in the morning, going on Twitter and seeing some of the worst takes known to man, then consider following my Twitter, which only has based and correct opinions. Link in the description below.